say hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our day. Welcome to our day. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> that was the best. Pick a number between one and five. Five. Tangled. Rapunzel. <laughs> Once upon a time, there lived an old woman named Mother Gothel. <laughs> In my mind, I wanted to say a brothel. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> nope. A magical golden flower gave her appearance of youth and beauty. Centuries later, the flower was found and used to heal a sick queen. Soon, the queen had a beautiful baby girl, Rapunzel. Mother Gothel discovered that the flower's magic had transferred into the baby's golden hair. When she cut off a lock, the lost hair, the hair lost its power. So she snatched the princess and vanished. Each year, on Princess Rapunzel's birthday, the heartbroken king and queen released lanterns into the sky hoping their light would guide the princess home. Mother Gothel kept R Rapunzel locked in a tower and pretended to love her, but she only truly loved Rapunzel's long golden hair. Just before her 18th birthday, Rapunzel wanted to leave the tower and get a closer look at the lantern she saw every year on her birthday. But Mother Gothel would not let her leave. Meanwhile, Flynn Ryder, a local thief, and his partners in crime, the Stabbington brothers, had stolen a crown. Flynn ran off with the satchel and held the crown. The captain of the guard and his horse, Maximus, were after him. Flynn knocked the captain off Maximus and landed in the saddle himself. The satchel flew into the air. Trying to grab the satchel, Flynn and Maximus went toppling into the canyon. When they landed, Flynn took off and discovered a mysterious tower. He climbed the tower and scrambled into an open window to hide. Finally, he breathed a sigh of relief. He was safe. Clang! Suddenly, everything went black. Rapunzel had sneaked up behind Flynn and hit him with a frying pan. She dragged him to the wardrobe and stuffed him inside. She hoped to show Mother Gothel that she was brave enough to leave the tower. Then Rapunzel noticed the crown in Flynn's satchel. She placed it on top of her head and gazed, wide-eyed, into the mirror. When Mother Gothel arrived, she told Rapunzel that she could never ever leave the tower. Rapunzel thought quickly. She asked for a special birthday gift so that Mother Gothel would be out away for three days in order to get it. When she had gone, Rapunzel offered Flynn a deal. If he took her to see the lanterns, she would give him the satchel. Give him the satchel. Flynn had no choice but to agree. Rapunzel slid down her hair. Slowly, slowly, she touched one foot to the soft grass, then the other. I can't believe I did this, she said, rolling on the ground. Rapunzel was having fun, but she also felt guilty for defying Mother Gothel. Still, she was determined to see the lanterns, even though Flynn didn't want to take her. Before she had gone far, Mother Gothel saw Maximus the horse, the horse that had been chasing Flynn. A palace horse, she gasped. She raced back to the tower in case the guards had found Rapunzel, but Rapunzel wasn't there. Then Mother Gothel saw the crown and Flynn's wanted poster. Now she knew who had taken Rapunzel, and nothing was going to stop her from finding him. Meanwhile, Flynn led Rapunzel to a pub filled with scary looking customers. One of them held up Flynn's wanted poster and everyone began fighting for the reward money. 
but Rapunzel asked them to let Flynn go so that she could take her dream, make her dream come true. Then Mother Gothel peered through the window. She was shocked to see that Rapunzel had managed to befriend a room full of ruffians. Just then, Maximus, the royal guards, and the Stabbington brothers burst into the pub. Flynn and Rapunzel escaped through a secret passageway, but Maximus found the escape route. The horse headed down, down it after them, with the guards and the Stabbington brothers in tow. Mother Gothel had seen everything. She found out where the tunnel ended. Flynn and Rapunzel <laughs> Flynn and Rapunzel sprinted through the tunnel. Suddenly, water came flooding in and Maximus, the guards and the Stabbingtons were washed away. Flynn and Rapunzel were trapped and Flynn injured his hand. I'm so sorry, Flynn, Rapunzel said. Then she released her hair, realised her hair could save them. It could light up the cave and show them the way out. When they had escaped the flood, Rapunzel's hair... Nope. Rapunzel wrapped her hair around Flynn's injured hand and the wound magically healed. Flynn could see just how special Rapunzel was. Meanwhile, Mother Gothel met the Stabbington brothers at the end of the passageway. She offered them revenge on Flynn for stealing the crown and much more besides. Mother Gothel found Rapunzel while Flynn was getting while Flynn was away gathering firewood. She laughed at Rapunzel's feelings for Flynn. She told her that Flynn didn't really like her. He only wanted the crown, but Rapunzel would not go back to the tower. After Mother Gothel left, Rapunzel continued her journey with Flynn and Maximus. The horse had agreed to let Flynn go free for one more day. When they arrived in Corona, <laughs> it, <laughs> it was the most exciting experience of Rapunzel's life. As a group of girls braided her hair and pinned it up with flowers, Rapunzel noticed the kingdom's flag with its golden sun symbol. Rapunzel realised that she recognised it from somewhere. Rapunzel was transfixed by a mosaic. It was of the king and queen holding a baby girl with striking green eyes, just like her own. Let the dance begin, called an announcer. Rapunzel and Flynn joined hands and began to whirl around the square. That evening, Flynn led Rapunzel to a boat and rode to a spot with a perfect view of the kingdom. As lanterns filled the sky, Rapunzel gave Flynn the satchel. She was no longer afraid he would leave her once he had the crown. Beneath the glow of the lanterns, Rapunzel and Flynn held hands and gazed into each other's eyes. Flynn offered the crown to the Sabington brothers, but they wanted Rapunzel and her magic hair instead. They knocked Flynn unconscious, tied him to the helm of the boat and set him sailing into the harbour. When Rapunzel saw Flynn sailing away, she thought she had she thought he had traded her for the crown. Mother Gothel dealt with with the Sabbingtons and confronted Rapunzel. She could finally get back to the tower. Meanwhile, the palace guards found Flynn with the stolen crown, arrested him and threw him in the prison. The Ma but Maximus knew what had really happened and, be and came up with a plan. The horse enlisted the help of some of the ruffian pub customers. They broke Flynn out of prison launching him over the prison walls and onto Maximus's back. Together they galloped off to rescue Rapunzel. Rapunzel had realised she was the lost princess, so Mother Gothel put her in chains. When Flynn arrived, he called to Rapunzel to let down her hair 
and climbed up the tower, but Mother Gothel stabbed him. Rapunzel begged Mother Gothel to let her heal Flynn. In return, she promised she would stay with the old woman forever. Mother Gothel agreed and unchained her. She knew Rapunzel never broke a promise. Rapunzel rushed to Flynn and placed her hair over the, his wound. But Flynn grabbed a shard of glass and cut her hair off. It turned brown and lost its magic power. What have you done? Mother Gothel cried. Within moments, she turned to dust. Rapunzel cradled Flynn and a single golden tear fell on his cheek. His entire body began to glow. Moments later, he was healed. Hang on. Flynn and Maximus brought Rapunzel straight to the castle. Her parents were filled with joy. Their daughter had finally been returned to them. Everyone gathered to celebrate. Floating lanterns were released into the sky. The light had guided the princess home at last. Yay! <laughs> Pick a number between one and four. Five! Wrong! The Winter Journey, again. Names are gonna be as I see them, because it's Pocahontas. <laughs> At autumn's end, the wind blew colder and the last leaves fell from the trees. The crops were harvested and the feasting was over. For Pocahontas and her village, the time had come to travel to their winter camp. Pocahontas loved her home by the river, but she always looked forward to this trip. The journey meant new adventures and new places to explore. Best of all, many different villages from the Powhatan Nation gathered at the winter camp to work together during the cold months. As they walked, Pocahontas stepped off the trail and bent down to examine the cold ground. She saw fresh tracks from an... Is a, has possum got an O at the beginning? Yeah, and a possum How stupid. <laughs> <laughs> from a possum, a family of deer and even a bobcat. Some animals were still out and about in the winter. Moments later, snow began to fall. Pocahontas tipped her head back, enjoying the feeling of the snow on her face. We are close, called Pocahontas' father, Blula, the chief of Powhatan. Did you not hear how I said Pocahontas? I thought it sounded fine. No. Did it not? No. <laughs> Pocahontas' village was the first to arrive at the campsite. They hurried to unpack and set up their winter home. Some villagers made shelter by tying woven mats onto the wooden frames. Others started fires for cooking and warmth. A group of hunters prepared to find food for that night's dinner. Pocahontas and some others set out to gather firewood. Let's bring back as much dry wood as we can before dark, said Pocahontas. Pocahontas strayed further from the camp to search for wood. She loved the quiet of the winter forest and the soft sound of the wind. Wait, she thought. What was that noise? Pocahontas put down her firewood and listened carefully. There it was again. It sounded like crying. She climbed the nearest tree, but couldn't see anything at first. Then she looked down and gasped. A little lost deer was wandering alone in the woods. He was too young to survive on his own and needed to get back to his mother quickly. Pocahontas climbed down from the tree. Her moccasins crunched softly in the snow. The fawn looked up and froze. Pocahontas held her hand out. It's all right, little one, she said. I'm here to help. 
Slowly, Pocahontas reached into her pouch and pulled out some berries. She held them flat on her, on her palm so the breeze would carry the scent towards the fawn. The little deer pricked up his ear and bleep, pick, pricked up his ears with interest, and Pocahontas gently tossed the berries to him. While the fawn happily ate his snack, Pocahontas crept around him until she could see his tracks in the snow. She had to take the fawn back the way he had come. She dropped a berry on his path. Following the tracks a little further, she dropped more berries and the fawn went hurrying after her. Soon they came back to the bank of a creek. Scanning the icy mud at the water's edge, Pocahontas saw two sets of tracks. One belonged to the fawn and the other she thought must belong to his mother. The mother's track continued on the opposite bank. Pocahontas lightly ran across a path of rocks in the creek. Then she put a berry down on the far bank. The fawn walked closer and reached out a hoof, then pulled back. He was afraid of the rushing water. Patiently, Pocahontas piled more and more berries on the bank. The fawn gazed at them hungrily. Finally, he charged right into the shallow creek. Splash! In a few bounds, he was across the sloshing onto the bank. Dripping icy water, he looked up at Pocahontas and shook himself happily. Pocahontas and the fawn followed the mother's trail to the edge of the clearing. Peering ahead, Pocahontas saw a doe pacing back and forth. Is that? she started to ask, but the fawn was already galloping across the clearing to his mother. The family was together again. Pocahontas watched, smiling and peaceful. A branch snapped behind her. Pocahontas whirled round. There you are, Pocahontas' best friend, Nakomi, called to her. You've been gone a while, so I came looking for you. Look, Pocahontas said, pointing the lit pointing. The little one was lost. How sweet, Nakom oh, Nakoma, not Nakomi. Nakoma said. But we should get back. It's almost dark. Pocahontas brightened. Has anyone else arrived? Three more villages, probably more by now, replied Nakoma. Pocahontas nodded. That's the beauty of winter. It brings us together. Back at the camp, people from many Powhatan villages were gathered. Everyone seemed to be talking at once. There was so much to catch up on, so many stories to tell. Pocahontas snuggled under a blanket by the fire and listened. She was happy to be surrounded by the love and laughter of her family. Seasons changed and camps moved, but no matter where she rested her head, the land and the families Pocahontas found there always felt like home. Dun dun dun!